I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyan Sundaram. Welcome to my channel. All of us have a question about deworming. So this is related to worms in our uh, intestines and uh, parasites as we call them. So many parents have heard about taking deworming treatment for their children and so they ask us this question when they come to the clinic. So what exactly are the worms in the stomach so to speak it's intestines actually and what do they do and why do we need to treat it so we have uh, different organisms and parasites are one group of organisms so i discussed about infections in previous videos bacteria fungi these are microscopic and uh, parasites are macroscopic uh, as well as microscopic as well so we have worms uh, we have pinworm we have hookworm we have round worm we have tapeworm so each of them uh, have different presentations uh, for example the hookworm is responsible for anemia because it uh, sticks on to your intestinal wall and it takes blood and once it releases the blood leaks from the bite site so you lose blood and so the anemia is very common and iron deficiency because it usually happens in poor environments poor countries where the dietary iron source is poor as well so iron deficiency sets in and as you know iron deficiency has a big impact on these children round worms are the typical uh, the long slimy worms we get in the stool which typically seen in photographs I have uh, put a few photographs on the thumbnail. I'll add one or two slides in the end illustrating these names. So the round worms are Ascaris. Uh, it's a long worm and uh, usually it, uh, if it becomes an infestation, there are too many of them, they start competing with you for your food related nutrients. So you may get uh, dietary deficiencies even though you're consuming adequately. So again, weakness, bloating, and of course the worms coming out in the stool is not a good feeling. Uh, the whip worm is a typical uh, uh, worms that you may see in the stool uh, and the pin worms as well where you get uh, irritation in the nappy area, night scratching. Uh, reduced appetite can be a feature of any of these as well. And uh, obviously the tapeworm is one of the most dangerous in that one of the, it's from pork, uh, uh, pork tapeworm. It uh, basically it causes uh, their initial stages to go into brain. It's called cysticercosis. There is a risk of uh, fits happening from uh, these larvae sticking in the brain. So as part of its life cycle, it may migrate in different parts of the body. There are other uh, parasitic infections like malaria, which uh, obviously is not being discussed now. But the intestinal uh, worms is what we are discussing and most of these respond to deworming. So how do these get into our body? We can get the worms uh, from uh, hookworm for example, it enters from the feet. Uh, when we are walking barefoot on areas which are uh, contaminated soil with stool both from humans and animals, the uh, larvae may start getting into the skin and they migrate. So if you are going into the water barefoot in a uh, dirty area or if you are walking on uh, slush in a dirty area, these worms are very likely to get into you. Uh, you can also get tapeworm from eating uncooked meat, pork and beef and uh, you can also get uh, other worms from unwashed salads. So the eggs are often in leafy vegetables and the salads if they are not washed properly there is also an oral fecal route in which if you are carrying that uh, you may transmit the eggs to the people you are feeding. So if you have treated one member of the family and you have actually seen worms, you should be treating the whole family because unless you break that cycle, this may keep including the food handlers. So the question arises as to who should be treated and do we need regular deworming at what age should we start? If you are living in a high endemic country, uh, India is one of them obviously, uh, and you frequently visit an area like the rural areas with a high helminth infection rate, you are advised to take the deworming twice a year starting from one year of age. And if you uh, are in a low endemic area, you are mainly a city dweller, you don't go to the villages, your children never walk uh, barefoot uh, outside the house and you are always washing uh, the salads, you are always cooking the meat well, 
then the risk is low and once a year may be adequate the same applies to people living in uh, developing uh, developed world like uh, uae for example but you have still contact with your home country where the infestation rate is significant so you go there once a year for your vacation or you may have people visiting you from there or a maid may be coming from there so if they carry as well there is a risk so uh, if you are living in a developed country and there is hardly any contact with the uh, high infestation areas you don't need to take deworming unless there are concerns uh, if you are in a high infestation area more than uh, 20 to 50 percent risk you take twice a year if it is more than 20 percent or around 20 percent risk once a year is enough albendazole uh, commonly called as zentil suspension is uh, readily available and uh, the dose is 20 ml of the suspension or 400 milligram as a single dose and then you have to repeat it after two to three weeks this repeat dose is very important because uh, uh, albendazole only kills the parasite forms the eggs are not killed and the eggs hatch the new set of parasites come after two weeks or so going by their life cycle so by treating it after two to three weeks you are killing the new worms as well uh, in the infants uh, very rarely you get infestation so below one year you don't usually treat after one year you give half dose till two years and then the full dose after two years of age and uh, the repeat courses as i said it depends on the frequency if you do see the infestation persisting you need to do further investigation you have to make sure everyone in the family has received their two doses completely and uh, the stool testing uh, is not necessary if you have actually seen the worms uh, in the stool and you can uh, test the stool for ova of the parasites as well if you have unexplained anemia uh, hookworm infestation can be considered and uh, deworming course can be given uh, if you have unexplained eczema in the nappy area if you have uh, poor eating and you have not done deworming recently you can consider one course so it's a safe treatment so you can consider doing it and see if it benefits again uh, there will be a few slides showing these worms after this and uh, do share this uh, with your friends and uh, relatives who might benefit from watching this